Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I have for you the requested e-filing 101 for beginners. So in this video, I'm just going to break down um, my couple of tips and tricks for e-filing um, that I have kind of come across in my nail journey so far and what I think would help you be successful and not be scared of the e-file. So if you want to know my tips and tricks, just keep watching. So first, when you are doing anything with an e-file, you want, obviously, a good e-file. This is the Kiara Sky Beyond Pro Portable Nail Drill. Um, I've had this for about two months. No, not even two months. Like a month and a half now. And I really do like it. Um, it is portable. It's wireless other than the wire that of course connects the hand piece to the machine. Um, comes with like a little stand and then there's also a little stand that you can rest your hand piece on. But I like to keep it in this thing most of the time. Um, except when I'm readily using it. So here this is. I do have a video of my unboxing of this but you're going to get to see it in action a little bit more. So, right here we have our um, on-off dial and it's our speed control. And then here, now this is pretty vital. So, when you're working with an e-file, you have forward and you have reverse. As you can see, mine is clicked into forward because I am right-handed. Now, if you are left-handed or if you are doing your left hand, then you need to click that to reverse. It's just, it changes the direction that the bit will spin. So that's really important because I'm gonna show you very briefly with a, just not a very good bit. Um, this is my little bit holder. Obviously I have a lot of drill bits. Um, do you need this many? Probably not, but I will go over which ones are probably my most necessary ones but for right now I just want to show you what would happen if you are kind of fighting against the grain you work in. So if you are right-handed you are going to work from right to left. You're gonna work this way. You always want to work in especially when you're starting you want to work in one direction with your e-file it's just gonna make your life easier. So you're obviously going to need to go from right to left when you're doing cuticle work. But other than that, when I started using an e-file, I always got... Let me see if I can replicate. So I'm just going to put it on like a 6 or something. I always... I'd be, you know, going to town, going to town, going to town. And then it would go whoop, warp. So it would warp right around my nail. And I've had times when usually that is when your e-file, it gets away from you. So your volume, or your not volume, not your volume, your um, speed could be up too high for whatever you're doing. Um, your e-file is trying to tell you something. Something is not right when you, when it warps around your nail like that. Like, that's not what you want because it's un it's scary for a client speaking from somebody who has been on the, both the, um, you know, doing end of it and the receiving end of it. I, it, it can be scary, just alarming because you don't always know when it's going to happen. So honestly, if I were to recommend, obviously you have to go around the cuticle like, like this, you don't really have an option. But I wouldn't do this side to side motion if I was just beginning with an e-file. Just basic, basic stuff. Obviously, I have gotten comfortable with the e-file and I have been able to um, kind of feel what speeds are good for me. But even if I just get at an awkward angle, I've had times where I've laid my e-file bit like right here a little too long and then it'll kind of like go like that. We don't want that. So 
if I had to recommend, if you, because when you're a beginner, most likely you are going to be laying a lot of product you don't need to just try to, your nails aren't going to be perfect. I would always recommend, unless you are trying to go around that cuticle area, you need to be going like down, down and away from the nail because it is a lot easier to manage this than trying to go like this when you're just getting used to the e-file. So that is my first tip for you is, and if you are working in reverse, so I'm going to show you what happens when I'm working in reverse and I'm trying to go right to left because I'm right handed. So it's really, it's pulling away from me. I, you can't maybe tell because I, it, because I do have pretty good control of my e-file, but if I was doing this, it's going to get away from me. If I put it on like a higher, like maybe a 15, it's definitely going to get away from me. Like that. Do you see that pull? I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to lay it and it's getting away from me. Because it's not how you work. It's not in the direction that you work if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, then of course you need to be using it in reverse. But So the other thing that you'll probably notice that I had been doing, even just showing you that little demonstration, is I am balancing my pinky. That is a very big deal when you're e-filing and for you to get control. I didn't do it for the longest time, let me tell you. When I started get it, doing it and getting it in the habit of it, it makes a huge difference in just the control that you have with your e-file. This is why some clients don't like the e-file. So it, 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 you are going to have so much more control doing this because you are not going to be putting near as much pressure on. Do you see like how red my, my index finger is? Or not my index finger, my pinky is? That's because I am putting a lot of pressure on that thumb and I'm balancing it. So I'm not putting that pressure that I'm distributing onto my pinky. I'm not putting it on the nail. Because the more pressure you put on the nail to take product off or shape it or whatever, you're going to create friction. And now, I mean, I did okay in physics and in high school, but like, I do know that friction is going to cause heat eventually. The more friction you have, the more heat you're going to generate. So, that's why I always recommend balancing your pinky. Oh, let's get that turned forward. So you'll see this says KRPM right here. Maybe you won't because my ring light seems to be dying and you can't see it, but it does. It says KRPM. So that's, this is your basically RPM. So when I'm saying I'm using my drill at a seven or I'm using my drill or I'm sorry, e-file at a 10 or a three, I, that, that means 3,000 rotations per minute, 7,000 rotations per minute, 10,000 rotations per minute, whatever. So that's what the speeds, air quotes, mean. You will also notice that when I e-file, I don't stay in the same place for too long. Like this. So every time, if I was staying in the same place, I would be doing this. And yeah, okay, it takes product off, but it's gonna create that friction. So when you hear, you just, you can hear it. Listen, that's one, it's two. Every time it pauses, you can kind of hear the pause in the sound. I'm going away from the nail. I'm picking up my bit. It doesn't look like it probably because it's pretty subtle, but I'm using very small motions, which is the best thing for you to do when you're starting out with an e-file. That's going to help you the most using small, precise motions. And like I said, if you're taking down bulk, my best piece of advice to you would be to just go down. Just do this. Because this is so much easier to control than this when you're starting out. Because obviously, 
it's hard to warp it this way. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that doesn't make sense. But the fear of going around the world, as I have seen it called, <laughs> the likelihood is going to be much greater if you are going side to side. Now, like I said, can you do this? Absolutely. But you have to be very confident with the e-file. And typically, people are not confident with the e-file when they first get it. I would also recommend, when you are first learning, a bit like this. This is, this bit, honestly, it just came with the e-file. Um, it, it's not very good. It's not really good for anything. But if you just want to get used to it, for sure, use this on enhancements. I would not e-file on your natural nail until you're pretty confident on it. And even then, just so you can feel pressure, because you're going to have to e-file on your natural nail eventually. Arbor Band. This is essential. Don't go into carbide bits. Don't Just don't go there when you're a beginner. This could shape a nail up. It could take longer than a carbide bit, but learning isn't a, you know, it's not a process that takes a couple of days. Maybe if you're doing it intensively, but it's not, you're not going to learn how to use an e-file in like an hour. It's just not going to happen. You need to learn to use the machine, learn the feel of it, and kind of learn how you work with it how because you have essentially a relationship with your e-file it sounds silly but it's true you need to foster that relationship it's just like driving a car like do you I don't I don't know if it's the same anywhere else but I know here in Pennsylvania where I am we have to have our um permit we can't just go out and get our license right away after we get our driver's permit so we go and we test for the permit we take like the computer test and then we have to have our permit for six months on the dot like you cannot test before that six month mark you have to have your permit for six months before you can take you can even take your driver's test because you need time to learn the machine learn how to use it same thing with an e-file. Now, is it going to take you six months until you have a permit? No, you don't. But, same kind of concept. You don't get good at anything overnight. But if you do, I mean, good for you. So, if I were taking bulk off, I would, with an arbor band, I'm just going to put it up to ten. Because, for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to take this gel polish off. And even I like to use this up, this down motion. I just think it, it makes my life a lot easier. And you can hear the short little bursts that it's going through. There we go. I am not experiencing any burning. And I have very sensitive... Um, nail beds. Now see here, watch, I'm going to go around the cuticle. I'm being really careful. I'm not digging back there because I know there's growth back there. And I'm also, see, see how hard I'm pressing into my pinky finger because I'm balancing my hand. So I am going to put all of that pressure that I really kind of want to put on the nail and I'm going to let the drill do the work for me, or the e-file. I know it's kind of hard sometimes to relinquish control. And it's kind of hard for us to be, you know, just let the drill do its job. I get it. But, we bought it for a reason. Otherwise, we'd be hand filing. And that would just kill our shoulders the whole time. I'm pretty sure I have carpal tunnel because of um, hand filing so viciously. So... Is this a super effective way that I would say uh, is my favorite to take gel polish off with, with an arbor band? No. The only time I really use an arbor band personally is to prep the natural nail. Because it is safe to use on the natural nail. And that is why I'm suggesting that you would use an arbor band and a mandrel 
when you are learning how to e-file. Because if you nick your, you know, if you go onto the natural nail, as long as you're not like applying a crazy amount of pressure, or, you know, you do graze the skin, say you do go around the world, it's not going to chew your cuticle up like a carbide bit would, especially a carbide bit with a very sharp edge such as this one. Now, the now, now that I'm thinking about this, I'm going to have to refilm the intro because I was going to show you how to shorten these nails and I was going to do a tutorial on this, but I've gotten too in-depth on e-filing. So this will just be a separate video and that's fine. So this is your mandrel. This is one that you're definitely going to want. A mandrel comes with pretty much every bit. This one came with my Kira Sky bit. It's really cute. It has a little rhinestone on it. And this arbor band that I'm using, I just got it on Amazon. And it was probably, hmm, I think I got a pack of them of fine, medium, and coarse for like $13. I believe they're McCart. The fine ones don't fit this, so you just have to kind of be careful. I don't know. Sometimes they can stretch out or just not fit. This one fits fine though. This is a medium. I wouldn't use a coarse on your natural nail, but fine or medium would be okay to prep it, prep the natural nail. So I would recommend just go with a finer medium if you're practicing with the um, e-file. So I'm just going to throw that back into my chuck because I don't want it to be harmed. So this is obviously one that you're definitely going to have. There are bits like mm, bits like this so these are like um e-file manicure bits oh, my little ring light just gave out so i don't have very good lighting but sorry this is like a little diamond bit that you would use to clean around the cuticle i wouldn't recommend getting into that right as you're like getting into nails like, don't worry about that. That's a technique you can learn later on. I, if I were saying to a beginner what you need, I would say something like this. This is a fine carbide bit that you are only going to use on an enhancement. Don't ever use this on your natural nail. It will just annihilate it. I'm speaking from personal experience. Trust me when I tell you. Now, I didn't mean to take it on the natural nail, but I was filing down some acrylic and I got a little file happy. And yeah, my nails were a wreck. This was like three years ago when I was first starting. So don't make the same mistake I did. This is only for enhancement. If you are concerned that maybe, you know, you could take it onto the natural nail, I would recommend filing down with this. And, um,. Either soaking the rest of the set off if you're doing like a full removal or if you're getting nervous to take this around the cuticle, which this has a rounded, like a soft top, rounded top, um, and it's going to make sure you don't cut your cuticle. But even if you're still maybe a little bit afraid, like maybe this way, then I would just use the Arbor Band because it's going to be a lot less threatening. So I would recommend something like this. And then if you're, if you're starting to get confident, you could get a little bit of a more coarse grit. Like this would be like a medium. But I would still recommend if you are um, a beginner to stick with the smooth, or not the smooth top. I guess the other one's the smooth, excuse me, smooth top. A round top. I would, I would still deal with the safety bit. Because it's just going to be easier for, for you. Now me, I don't particularly like these bits. Only because I find them hard to get the cuticle really, really flush to the natural nail. So that is where bits like this come in. Which I'm sorry are super dusty. This is a fine bit. It's from Kira Sky. And it has like a blunted edge almost. Like, I don't know if you can see this. But the edge isn't completely sharp like this one. It's not just like a 90 degree drop off. It almost tapers a little bit. I'm trying to get it into good light. I'm still trying to figure this out. <laughs> so it is a lot nicer to use with the cuticle area and to get that cuticle really flush to the natural nail without giving 
that ring of fire that you would get if you had this bit and were like digging into the natural nail that is around the enhancement. I would also recommend having a little skinny mini bit like this. This is nice. I like it to um, to go under. Oh, not that one. <laughs> I like it to go under like the nail enhancement sometimes. Um, you know, you can kind of clean up under here. You could remove the natural nail if that's what your client wanted. Um, enhance the C-curve. Just tidy it up around there. And it's also nice sometimes for more precise work around the... Um, cuticle area, but don't be fooled. It is still a carbide bed. So these are all carbide bits I'm recommending. And then I would recommend a bit like this. Now you, if you're just starting out, I would not recommend these just because they are so, so coarse. You can see the difference between these two guys. And these are both Kira Sky. I'm sorry this one is a little discolored. It's because I left it sitting in Barbicide for too long. Focus, focus, maybe, here. You can see how gritty this is compared to this. That's so much grittier. So you definitely don't want to use this kind of a bit unless you are absolutely confident that you can use it correctly. So, that is my little intro to e-filing and a couple of my suggestions and quick tips. Just to recap, you are going to want, I'll just, I'll give you a little um, full profile of all of the bits that I would recommend you have. So, I would recommend starting out with just ones like these and you could have... Definitely your mandrel, that is essential, and smooth top, or not smooth top, rounded top safety bits, and you could get these in a variety of grits, so you could get this in like a coarse grit, or a medium grit, or a super fine, or super coarse, I would just still recommend them to have this rounded top, so you don't cut the cuticle while you're still learning. And then, when you move on, I would recommend getting these three bits which are a fine kind of um, tapered barrel bit for um, shaping the nail because your application is going to get better. Um, a long skinny carbide bit that is going to clean underneath the natural nail and kind of give you precision. And then a really coarse, or you could do this one, this one's my favorite, this is a Goldilocks from Exclusive Nail Couture. Um, and most of these are in like a bell shape or like a typhoon shape or a, something like that. Um, these coarse, these really coarse bits to take down a lot of product. These are great for fills or all acrylic redesigns or removals or anything like that. It's going to take it down or even just gel polish. These take down gel polish lightning fast. So those are your bits that you would want. And to recap, remember, forward and reverse, very, very important. Use forward if you are right-handed or working with your right hand. Use reverse if you are left-handed or working with your left hand. Get you a decent e-file. I don't think I mentioned this. You want to make sure your e-file can have the capability to go very, very low like this, like a three. That's what you're going to want to use on the natural nail. And you want an e-file that's going to go up to at least 30,000 RPMs. This one goes up to 35. You will probably never use it this high, but if it has that 30,000 RPM magic number or above, that means it, it most likely has the torque to work really smoothly and really well on these lower settings without it stalling out on you. So e-file is very important. Remember direction. You want to move in one direction, um, especially around the cuticle area. And I would honestly recommend if you are just beginning, simply downwards, downwards motions. Don't go back and forth like this. Downwards motions. Don't lay your bit in one place for too long. It's going to create friction. And that is all I have for you for this video. 
So I hope that you guys learned something about e-filing. Um, I hope it benefited you in some way. If you have any questions about e-filing, please let me know below. It has been a real learning process for me because I just wasn't sure. Um, I was, I lacked confidence in it for quite a while, but I am pretty confident now. You know, I've really gotten to know my machine and having a great e-file does help. And this is an exceptional e-file. I highly recommend. I also do recommend, I think it's from McCart. Oh no, I'll link it down below. It was my other e-file and it was like purple and I really liked it. So it was a really good e-file. So I hope that this was helpful to somebody. Um, comment down below if you have any questions about e-filing or maybe tips that helped you when you were just starting out. And I will see you in the next one. Stay safe guys. Bye.